Hey Sagittarius, it's Suzanne with Sunny Forest Tarot. Happy New Year, happy 2022. Um, I took quite a bit of time off in December. My life kind of completely changed in December. And yeah, I just, I don't know. I couldn't, uh, every time I sat down to, to start the readings for the week, it just... It just didn't work out, all right? So, you know, I apologize. I'm just, uh, I don't know, I'm figuring things out. All right, I probably will not be uploading as often as I used to be. It might be every two weeks. If I post more, great, I will do that. If not, um, I don't want to overpromise and underdeliver. And yeah, so that's, that's kind of where I'm at. Um, yeah, so for, uh, for Sagittarius, what we're going to do, we're going to look at, um, we're going to take a look at what 2020, the year 2020 was about for you. We're going to take a look at what the year of 2021 was about for you. And we're going to take a look at what 2022 is going to be about for you. Okay. So we're using this deck here. This card represents 2020 for you. This card here represents 2021. And then this card here represents 2022. Okay. So taking a look at 2020, what is 2020 about? Um, you know, when we break it down numerologically, it's a year of the number four. Fours are about what's going on in reality, you know, in 2020, a lot of us might have gotten smacked with some reality that we weren't expecting. Fours are also about contemplation, thinking of like the Four of Swords, okay, um, or the Four of Pentacles, very pensive, very contemplative energy. So let's start there for you. What do we have? All right, we have surrender. So 2020 was about surrender for you. Uh, it says, sometimes learning to surrender can feel as if you're dying. This might be very difficult for you. This might have been very difficult for you. The ego learns what's hardest, to stop trying to control the whole universe. Okay, so Sagittarius, you know, I feel like in 2020, you know, you might have encountered some things that you felt were restrictive. You might have encountered things that hindered your freedom. You didn't like this, okay? And frankly, in 2020, a lot of us encountered things like that, right? Because what were we dealing with? We were dealing with a pandemic at the time, you know? And of course, we still are, you know, in, uh, in many states, and many countries, okay? Um, you know, 2020 was about you learning and needing to give up some level of control because when you do that, when you surrender, honestly, that's what ends up giving you, in a lot of ways, the most control. So, you know, this could be about a person, this could be about something that you do for a living, you might have felt like people were dictating what you could and couldn't do. And instead of surrendering to it, you know, you might have put up a lot of resistance. You know, you might have left a job in 2020 when things weren't going your way or you felt like you lost your autonomy in some way. All right. You might have um, given up on a particular connection or relationship you know, because, you know, maybe you had to be around that person more than you wanted to be or less than you wanted to be. Um, but either way, you were fighting the need to feel in control. So you might have ended things, dropped things, dropped people, dropped situations in order to maintain that sense or feeling of control. All right, so let's look at 2021. 2021 is a five year. So a five year is about, you know, it's about change and chaos. All right. Some people manage change and chaos better than others. 
If you found it very difficult to surrender to authority or to give up some level of your freedom, um, you know, for the greater good, I expect 2021 might have been, you might have experienced a lot of change and chaos. Let's see what we have here for you. Extraordinary. Okay. There's a wild and impetuous uniqueness to you that deserves to be honored. I feel like you absolutely would say that. You would absolutely acknowledge, okay, that, you know, you might be very unique and you feel like you might have felt in 2021 that people were not appreciating you for your uniqueness, for what you bring to the table, okay, your extraordinary nature. So I feel like the change and chaos that you might have experienced were about people not responding to you in the way that people might respond to this peacock, okay? This is very ego-rooted, all right? Um, yeah, I feel like I feel like that's almost saying extraordinary ego. And that goes along with an energy of resisting surrender. If you, if you did surrender to some level of control, I feel like your life got easier immediately. You know, if um, you realize that you're unique and extraordinary and you're also living in that energy of surrender, I feel like change and chaos probably wasn't an issue for you. But if you were fighting this in 2020 and 2021, I feel like you experienced a lot of chaos, a lot of change that might have been um, unpleasant. But it was happening for you. It was happening for you, not to you. Okay. Um, I feel like that's really important to, you know, to remember. But it's because of that resistance that you might have been hit with a lot of change and chaos and you felt ordinary. And it's okay to be ordinary, okay? Um, but, the, but the ego wants to be acknowledged as extraordinary. I almost feel like being ordinary is a good thing for you. And it's not to say that you're not extraordinary, but by being ordinary, you, you're in more of an energy of allowing things to unfold as they should. You're more aligned to the universe and to your higher self when you just allow things to, allow things to be. But I do feel like you experienced a lot of change and chaos in 2021, as many people have, okay? So what's 2022 about? 2022 is a year of number six. Six is about love and harmony. It's about choices, choices when it comes to love, okay? So what do we have here for 2022 for you? Sacrifice. Okay, so what I feel like this is saying is, you know, if we refuse to give up control, if we refuse to surrender to a higher power and we refuse to allow ourselves to be among the ordinary. Now, 2020, we're facing what we would possibly consider as sacrifice. What does this say? Sometimes surrender is painful. Look at that. It mentions surrender here. Surrender was definitely painful for you. God's cutting away all that needs to go. Illusions, obsessions, addictions. It is a sacrifice to love. That is what 2022 is about for you. Um, you know, realizing, again, that things are happening for you, not to you. And when things get aligned for you, you know, you might make some sacrifices, but I feel like you're going to realize that it is worth it to have love in your life unlike maybe you've had in the past, all right? So let's look, let's look um, at what or how 
love is playing a role. The choices that you make around love is playing a role in your 2022 year. Um, this particular deck that I'm using is called the Native Spirit Tarot. It's a very beautiful deck. It's a new deck for 2022. Uh, the creator sent this to me. Um, I am, whoops, I am not making any money off of this, but I'm just promoting it because I feel like it's a beautiful deck. <coughs> if it, if I didn't feel that, I wouldn't promote it. Um, I feel like this deck, first of all, the images are very simple. There's, I love color, so I feel like the colors really speak to me in this deck as well. The darker the images, I feel like the lower the vibration, the lower the energy of that card, all right? So if we get a lot of dark cards, keep that in mind. All right, so let's look at the year of 2022 for Sagittarius when it comes to making choices about love. This first card represents what is important when it comes to love. The second card represents who is important when it comes to love. This third card represents why love is important to you in 2022. And the fourth card here represents how love will be important to you in the year of 2022. And then finally, the fifth card represents when love will be important to you or the most important to you in 2022. All right. All right, so let's start here with what. What is important about love in 2022? All right, so we've got we've got the 4 of cups. So what is important when it comes to love and the 4 of cups? You know, I feel like there is some regret. I feel like 4 of cups Four of Cups can be about a breakup. It can be about looking at things from a negative perspective. Or it can be about regret. But the Ace of Cups always lingers in the Four of Cups. So the question for you is, are you spending more time in regret? Or are you spending more time in the energy of focusing on filling up your cup? your cup of love so it's ready to give to somebody? Or are you focused on these empty three cups here? What you have lost instead of what there is to gain from a particular situation. All right, so where would love come into the Four of Cups? Love comes into the Four of Cups through the Ace of Cups. So, you know, I feel like that is what needs to be focused on. Either, you know, whatever the Ace of Cups represents to you. It could be about filling up your own cup, so again, it's ready to be presented to somebody. Or it can be about an Ace of Cups that is trying to come in towards you. Let's go over here to why love is important in 2022. All right, so we have the Eight of Cups. Interesting. So for you, Sagittarius, there's definitely this, you know, very intense emotional energy. So did you walk away from something that you loved? You know, it doesn't have to be a person, but it certainly could be. Um, you know, you might have walked away from somebody or something that you loved. And I feel like if you haven't looked deeply at why you did that, there's, there's probably some answers for you when you do that, when you look at why you would walk away from something you loved. There's a reason, okay? So when we get over here to how, how is love important to you in 2022? All right, so we've got the Eight of Pentacles. 
So we've got two cards of the number eight here. The why and the how. The why and the how with these number eights are about finding what empowers you when it comes to love. Eight of Pentacles. How is love important? It's about putting in some type of effort. Effort that I feel like maybe you didn't put in in the past. Effort that you walked away from. <clears throat> I feel like there's regret about not putting effort in in the past. Okay? Um, you know, this might be somebody that you're dealing with. This might be you. This might be you that walked away from something that you loved. Maybe not even, I feel like not knowing why. You don't know why you did that. Eight of Pentacles, you know, says, you know, when it comes to how love is important, it's about putting in some type of effort that was not put in in the past. Let's look at when. When is love important here. Look at that. We've got another eight. So this could be, this is the eight of swords. So three eights. We've got eight of pentacles, eight of swords, eight of cups. What is missing? The eight of wands. So I feel like that's very telling. What has been missing for you is the right communication, the right emotional communication with somebody and that might uh, that might be why this surrender card showed up in 2020 surrendering to some emotional communication that you just may not have been ready for or you didn't do that you didn't surrender to some emotional communication that needed to be said, shared, right? You put up resistance. You walked away from something that you cared about, that you loved, and you ended up regretting it. And now, love isn't about focusing on why these cups are empty, why these three cups are empty. It's about why this Ace of Cups is hanging over your head. There's a full cup of love here somewhere, either a cup for you to give or a cup for you to receive, and it might be both, okay? So when we look at the Eight of Swords reg with uh, regards to when love is important, we're looking at eight days, eight weeks, eight months, or the eighth of any month, or August. August might be a very significant month for you when it comes to maybe possibly making the ultimate sacrifice when it comes to, to love or to what you love or who you love. There might be a sacrifice attached to true love for you in some way. So who are we talking about here? We have the Queen of Arrows. So this is the Queen of Swords. All right, so we might be dealing with a Libra, but we don't have to be. Um, the person that you feel like you might be dealing with is somebody that is you perceive to be not very emotionally connected. All right, doesn't mean that that's the case, but I feel like you perceive them as not being emotionally connected expressive, emotionally open, emotionally connected, and you might be mirroring that energy back to that person. If you feel this person is not emotionally open, you know, that might have shut you down, okay? You see them as the queen of swords, somebody that could hurt you, somebody that could cut you off, <coughs> somebody that, you know, cuts you off and doesn't look back. So it might have been easier to walk away. All right, so let's look at the Four of Cups first. <clears throat> A 
Let's look at the Four of Cups, and then let's look at this Eight of Cups. Four of Cups. And then we've got the Ten of Wands. All right, so when it comes to love, as far as what love means to you right now, it's a burden. It's a burden to carry the emotion. It's a burden to think about what it is that you regret when it comes to love. It's it's a burden that you want to... That's why in 2020, surrendering control in some way possibly would have helped you in this situation. But it would have, if this situation didn't exist then, it would have helped you going forward. Because I feel like this situation was calling for you to kind of relinquish control and surrender in some way. And you put up a wall. You put up resistance. And you walked away. You walked away from the, the emotions you had because you thought it was easier because you didn't want to deal with this energy. Queen of arrows, queen of swords. All right. And then we have the three of cups. So again, this is why. Why you walked away. You might have been trying to save a friendship. You might have already felt like you've sacrificed. You might have sacrificed a really strong connection, a really strong friendship, because there were developing feelings at some point. Things might have gone, things might have gone astray like really, really quickly. And it's there's a there's a feeling of discomfort here, like you were just uncomfortable. At the end of the day, you were uncomfortable with a situation, you were uncomfortable with a particular person, like this person really, um, really made you question things, question yourself, question whether you're ever in control of anything, whether you. It's almost like unpleasant love. Like, I feel like there was love here. And instead of focusing on the beautifulness of that love, it was like love was a problem in some way. You know, you can see the, the kind of the darker colors here, the darker energy. Um, Yeah, I feel like love was a problem. You know, and in order for it to not be a problem, there's, I feel like there's something you need to sacrifice. I feel like it's an ego, all right, and control. All right, so let's look at the Eight of Pentacles as far as how love is important. This is about putting effort in. And then we have, look at that, Queen of Cups. That literally says putting effort into love. It might be that you're dealing with a Scorpio. Again, you might be dealing with a Libra. Putting effort in to love. King of Coins. So King of Coins or King of Pentacles is card of Taurus. And King of Pentacles is about... It's more about sharing what you have. It's not necessarily, it's not important necessarily what you have, but it's about sharing what you do have. I don't feel like whoever this is for you cares about what, what it is you have as far as abundance, money, stability. I don't feel like that's primary for this person, although you might believe it is. You know, you might believe that um, money and success is, you know, is your ticket to love. And I don't feel like that's the case at all. So when we see the Eight of Pentacles and we see putting effort in, I almost feel like you're putting effort into becoming King of Pentacles, King of Coins, versus putting effort into love. And I feel like this was the, this was the energy 
that kept you from surrendering in the past, surrendering ego in the past, just allowing yourself to be an ordinary person that loves in an extraordinary way. That's what happened. All right, so let's look at this Queen of Arrows, Queen of Swords. You feel like somebody might cut you off if you're not where you think you should be in life. Queen of Swords. And then we've got, wow, we've got Six of Cups. So whoever this Queen of Swords is, and it doesn't have to be, a feminine, okay? It's we're just talking about the queen of arrows or queen of swords energy, which can be very unemotional. You see this person is very unemotional, but we have the 6 of cups. This person, the queen of arrows or the queen of swords does have emotion, but this person buries it under layers of logic and thinking and practicality. So What's underneath all of those layers, you know, is Six of Cups. So when this person thinks about you in an emotional fashion, in an emotional way, they feel very connected. They have very nostalgic memories of you. This person isn't judging you on what you have in life. This person is is judging you, however, on how you, how you share your heart, how you share love. So that brings out this queen of arrows or queen of swords energy in this person. That's why they put on that. They bury, they bury this. They do that to protect themselves. Get one more. Look at that. We have Ace of Coins. So when this person thinks about you in this emotional way, this Six of Cups soul connected way, all they think about is they think about their intentions to build something with you. And they're willing to start from the beginning. You know, we have this one hand with one pentacle. They're willing to build together with you. But it's being built on an emotional connection. It's not being built on money. Because this person loves the idea of building something together not coming in and saying, okay, what you have is mine. That's not what this person wants. That's not what this person is about. All right, let's look at this Eight of Swords here. When it comes to when, what this is telling me is that when August comes around or when the eighth day of the month comes around or eight days or eight weeks, you know, we've got a stuck energy here. So the likelihood of this, of you or this person making a sacrifice, I feel like something needs to be addressed here. All right. All right. We have the Ten of Swords. So somebody here feels... feels like they betrayed the other person or that this has ended. You, you know, and that would very likely keep somebody from sacrificing in love. You know, if you feel like this has ended, the likelihood that, you know, you heed this call as far as it being a sacrifice, that might be what the sacrifice is, is to move forward in love even though something has clearly ended. But you might, it doesn't necessarily mean that things will come back together. But I feel like whoever this person is does dream about that, does dream about something, a missed opportunity. 
the, the opportunity to build something together in some way. And the regret that you have, I feel like, can be overwhelming sometimes. And we've got Ten of Wands and Ten of Swords here. So that tells me that, you know, both of those are past energy. Something big happened in the past between the two of you. And it felt like, it might have felt like a mutual betrayal. It might have felt like a betrayal of somebody that really captured your heart in some way. And Knight of Arrows, Knight of Swords. I feel like there might have been a miscommunication here. You know, if there's a knight that's going to communicate in a way that could be a miscommunication, it's the Knight of Swords because the Knight of Swords acts first and thinks later. So somebody acted before they thought something all the way through or they did something or said something, or there might be a misperception about what somebody said or did that has really, has really brought a lot of hurt, maybe unnecessary hurt. Like anytime the Knight of Swords comes up, it's like there's, there always needs to be some clarification. All right, three of Pentacles. You know, I feel like there was a miscommunication about how the two of you might come together or how a relationship might move forward. I feel like there was a miscommunication about that and neither one of you have forgotten it. And somebody here, I feel like, feels like they were left because they didn't have enough to give and that wasn't the case. I feel like this Queen of Swords or Queen of Arrows might have cut off Sagittarius, not because of what they had or what they didn't have, but what they didn't share. Yep. All right. So... Let's take a look. Let's get some numerology cards here. I feel like for you, Sagittarius, um, for 2022, it's about not making love a problem. Making friends with love, right? Three of Cups, Three of Pentacles. Making friends with love. When you didn't in the past. It's about clearing up miscommunication if that's what you want to do. With Ten of um, Swords and Ten of Wands here, it literally, it could stay buried if nobody does anything. But here, it's saying put the effort into love. Love separates this King of Pentacles and the Eight of Pentacles. So it's about how you share love, not how you share stuff. That's what went wrong in some way. Okay, so let's get a few cards here, see what comes up. Rebirth, all right, that's your choice. You know, this might not be something that you want to take a second look at, but again, with these tens here, this is something that you do carry and it's something that you do have some regret around. There is an opportunity for a rebirth here. This, you know, certainly could be the judgment card or more than likely the tower card. So, you know, it feels like an unexpected rebirth. Is possible here what else do we have change hmm so this is speaking to 2021 right the year of the five all right so 
the changes that you experienced in 2021 in some way were possibly bringing up regrets. And I, the universe never wants you to sit in regret. I feel like the universe wants you to um, transmute that energy into something positive, okay? So there's still something here that needs change, especially if there was a miscommunication and somebody did something or said something without thinking that might have caused a lot of hurt for both people. Might not have been you, might have been somebody else. What else do we have here? Manifestation, there's the number eight again. This is saying that you have the power, you have the power to, to change the situation and to give an unexpected rebirth to this, if you want. It might just be about creating a sense of closure, if that's what you need. It might be creating a sense of closure for somebody else. But I feel like you manifest this through sharing love, making a sacrifice to share love is what I'm getting. You can go back and, you know, realize that giving up control and surrendering to something, allowing yourself to be in an ordinary energy so you can give extraordinary love and energy, put that out there. And realizing that it ultimately probably won't be as painful as you expect it to be. It'll actually make you feel good to do that. But the power is within you. With all of these eights, with this manifestation card, you have the power to manifest something even if you think it's impossible or difficult or hard. That is ultimately what will make you extraordinary, make you feel extraordinary. And the ultimate surrender is equal to the ultimate control as well. Love wasn't supposed to be a problem. But somehow it was made out to be a problem. And that's what 2022 is here for you. You know, it's, it's about realizing that love is not a problem. All right. All right. That is what I have for you, Sag. If you um, are looking for a deeper reading, you can certainly reach out to me. If not, no worries. I'll talk to you next time. All right. Thanks so much. Bye.